Okay, good evening uh, to everyone. We are still uh, who will be joining, who, are, who already has joined, who have already joined us uh, for tonight's uh, webinar on financial literacy. We are we will wait for a couple of uh, moments for some more uh, participants to be able to join in. Um, in the meantime, uh, here at the Philippine Consulate General in Sydney, we'd like to have some uh, just make some announcements for those who are here based in uh, Sydney, New, New South Wales, on some of the services and some of the activities of the of the consulate, and then from there we we can go on to the to the uh, webinar proper. So before we start. Uh, while we're waiting for the additional participants to access the meeting, uh, may we invite all Filipinos, dual and permanent residents to register for overseas voting in preparation for the May 2022 presidential elections. Kindly send us an M SMS to book an appointment for registration. Uh, our number is 0415-426-400 or visit our Facebook page at PHL in Sydney for updates and announcements on overseas voting. For those who wish to register, just bring your passport or dual citizenship documents, such as the oath of allegiance or the approval and identification certificate. And when you get to the consulate, uh, I just uh, uh, mention that you would like to register for overseas voting, and then we will uh, receive and process your, uh, your application. It will be all done straight, uh, straight away. The consulate would like to would also like to invite uh, everyone uh, around the world. Uh, uh, right, right here in Sydney, we are we are having our LASAP series. It's a web-based uh, culinary event in celebration of the National Nutrition Month this July, and we we post it every Friday at 6 p.m. on the consulate's uh, Facebook page, PHL in Sydney. Uh, tomorrow we will be featuring Visayas cuisine from Iloilo. Uh, so, abangan po natin yan. We've already had two episodes um, featuring uh, dishes from Bicol and uh, Ilocos. And then we started off with, of course, the, the classic adobo. So, those seem, uh, our LASAP series has had uh, quite, a, quite a following, we were happy to say. So, we will be um, posting uh, additional episodes uh, uh, every Friday. And then just uh, for gen in gen general uh, information of the of everyone in New South Wales in, in Sydney, that the consulate has been uh, continues to be open uh, to the public and continu continues to extend its uh, regular services. Uh, we ask that uh, every everyone anyone who wishes to avail of our services uh, book an appointment through our website, and then you will be able to get a specific uh, uh, appointment time. Whether it's for passports, uh, notarization, or NBI, uh, we will be able to receive you uh, as long as you book an appointment and also practice all the other um, social distancing uh, pre precautions uh, here in Sydney and uh, here in here in Sydney. And I believe we have already uh, a rather a good number of participants already. Uh, so we can uh, formally start. So uh, once again, uh, welcome. Good evening to everyone. Good evening. It is uh, 6 p.m. Uh, local time here, here, in, here in Sydney. Uh, I believe it is 4 p.m. Manila time to our guests from, uh, from Manila. And good evening to everyone. And welcome to the Philippine Consulate General's uh, uh, webinar, uh, webinar on financial literacy. The Philippine Consulate General in Sydney's Gender and Development Section, in cooperation with the Philippine Trade and Investment Center in Sydney, present, presents tonight's financial literacy webinar. Through this webinar, the consulate aims to support policies and programs that promote gender equality and women empowerment. In particular, we hope to promote financial in education that provides basic skills related to earning, spending, budgeting, borrowing, saving, and using other financial literacy tools to help women achieve better equality and economic empowerment. We also aim to educate women on financial literacy to better equip them with financial skills, especially during this period of crisis and pandemic. Many of our Kababayans abroad, unfortunately, have lost jobs and means of livelihood. So through this seminar, we hope they will learn something useful that they can apply 
when they get uh, deployed again after the global crisis has uh, has been has alleviated. Uh, so just to run up, just to go through a quick rundown of um, tonight's uh, uh, activities and speakers. So we will have uh, several several speakers. We will uh, hear from the Consul General in Sydney, uh, the Honorable Ezidin Tago. We will also hear from the Director of the Philippine Trade and Investment Center here in Sydney, Ms. Alma Argayoso. We'll talk about her office's uh, TNK initiatives, uh, Trabajo and Negosyo Kabohayan initiatives, and other negosyo services for overseas Filipinos. Then we will hear from our uh, main guest, Ms. Leila Martin, Senior Vice President of Land Bank of the Philippines, who will also uh, introduce some of her colleagues and team members to talk on, uh, on financial literacy. We will then have a Q&A session at the end uh, after Ms. Martin's uh, presentation. And we will be able to take uh, questions, and we can uh, uh, submit questions for our for our guests or for anyone here uh, at the consulate. For those uh, part uh, joining and uh, participating, you may submit your questions through the Q and A function of the of this uh, of this meeting of this web meeting. So, without uh, further ado, may we call on the Honorable Consul General Ezidin Tago, Consul General of the Philippine Consulate General in Sydney, to deliver a few remarks. Good day, all. Uh, thank you, Manny, for the uh, uh, introduction. I'd just like to, uh, before anything, thank uh, all our collaborators uh, today, uh, starting with uh, uh, PTIC Sydney. Uh, uh, the um, innovative uh, Ms. Alma, and also our partners from Land Bank, uh, led by Ms. Martin and her, uh, Ms. Uh, Martin, Leila Martin, and her team, uh, Rich and Eman. Uh, of course, I'd like to uh, uh, thank uh, our consulate team, who, uh, for the first time, are doing a webinar on uh, a webinar type uh, on financial literacy. I think we all recognize the importance of having money. A lot of money, especially uh, during Corona times, uh, it's important to be prepared and resilient. And uh, it's uh, really important also for all overseas Filipinos, uh, workers, students, and uh, uh, all categories to learn about financial literacy, budgeting, non-spending, and uh, uh, saving. And I'm glad that we have uh, today with us um, uh, our representatives from OF Bank and Land Bank to talk to us about how uh, to open a bank, even if you're overseas. Um, having money uh, away from you saved for a rainy day is very uh, important. Um, in my 25 years uh, here in the, in the Foreign Service, we've always seen the sad story of people working overseas for decades, yet when they go home, uh, they lack uh, both the money and the skills, uh, and sometimes the ideas to, to be financially independent. So um, I don't want to finish all my minutes. Uh, I would like would like to hear from the experts, from those who hold our money best. Um, again, I would like to thank all our partners, and we look forward to more projects in the future. And um, uh, to our listeners also uh, benefiting from uh, today's resource speakers. Salamat po. Thank you very much, uh, Consul General uh, Ezidin Tago, for his uh, welcome remarks. We now uh, call on the Director of the Philippine Trade and Investment Center here in Sydney, Ms. Alma Argayoso, to talk on her office's uh, initiatives and services for overseas, available for overseas Filipinos. Ms. Alma? Thank you, Consul Mani. Good evening, everybody. Magandang gabi po sa kanilang lahat. And thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us today virtually. I'd also like to thank our guest speakers for today who graciously accepted our invitation to share with us their knowledge and expertise on financial management and inform us of a new, exciting, and digital way of banking in the Philippines. Likewise, would I also just begin by thanking the Philippine Consulate General in Sydney for organizing this financial literacy webinar. The consulate and our agency work as a team and we are aligned in terms of our advocacy on gender development initiatives, 
and providing financial education because we want every Filipino, lahat po ng ating mga kababayan, including our students who are experiencing hardships at this time, to be financially healthy and making wise financial decisions and contributing productively to their families and relatives back home, as well as helping the Philippine economy grow, or more appropriately these days, helping the Philippines in the economic recovery. So ngayon po, medyo mahirap yon, but as you may also know, a lot of our kababayans have returned home. I believe there are close to 80,000 uh, Filipinos already that have been repatriated, and for some of them, they are unsure if they could return to their work abroad. At kung hindi naman po ganon ang sitwasyon na napauwi mula sa ibang bansa, marahil ay may mga pamilya or kamag-anak kayo who are having difficulties at this time of the pandemic. And so this brings us to our goal of assisting our returning kababayans or our fellow Filipinos navigate this very uncertain times. So let me just share my presentation. In the webinars that we conduct, I normally repeat some of the slides because we always have new participants. Okay. So even prior to COVID-19, we have an existing program called TNK, Trabaho Negosyo Kabuhayan, which is basically a partnership among the various government and non-government agencies to increase incomes by generating more jobs and promoting entrepreneurship. So in essence, we would like to encourage you to become entrepreneurs and pursue business activities as an alternative to job seeking, unemployment, or migration. I believe this has become even more important nowadays that a lot of people are out of jobs. And so the Department of Trade and Industry in the Philippines uh, provides various assistance to those who would like to start a business or help a business recover from the impacts of COVID-19. We have a long list of programs from assistance to assistance in business registration, loan and financial assistance, livelihood programs, technology and resources, capacity development and trainings, market platforms, and other programs. But I will just highlight some of the, the programs that we have. But later on after the webinar, I will provide you with the long list or the inventory of uh, programs that we have for those who would like to start a business or for those uh, returning Filipinos who would like to help their families in, in the Philippines or there are businesses that are uh, impacted by the pandemic. So first things first, if you would like to start a business, uh, of course you have to register your business and you can do that online already through this uh, portal. Uh, mentioned in the slide. So we have this enhanced business name registration system and you can already register online and also pay online using the payment uh, systems there mentioned in the website. And I think Land Bank is one of the banks where you could pay your business name registration online. We also have this program called Barangay Micro Business Enterprise or BMBE which is a basically it's a business entity or enterprise engaged in the production, processing or manufacturing of products or commodities, including agro-processing, trading and services, whose total assets excluding land shall not be more than 3 million pesos. So if you qualify for this type of business, you can register your business for free and avail of certain incentives such as exemption, from payment of income tax arising from the operations of the business, exemption from uh, the coverage of the minimum wage law, and other special assistance like credit facility from uh, government financing institutions, as well as technology and marketing assistance. We also have this program called P3 or Pondo sa Pagbabago at Pagasenso. It's an old program, but we have augmented the facility because of the pandemic. So we have this program called COVID-19 Assistance to Restart Enterprises Program or CARES Program. And it is a 1 billion peso loan facility set up through the SB Corp, the Small Business Corporation, which is the financing arm of the Department of Trade and Industry. So for this one, a small business could avail of 
loans from 5,000 to 200,000 with a very low interest rate of only 2.5%, not more than 2.5% every month and without any collateral requirement. So I believe we have already awarded uh, loans to the first batch of uh, loan applicants. Okay, next is the SSF or the Shared Service Facilities. This is a program that provides micro, small and medium enterprises with machinery, tools, equipment, systems, and other items under a shared system. So we know that when you start a business, it's very expensive to invest in certain machinery or tools, equipment, or other auxiliary systems. So the DTI could provide you with the necessary machinery, tools, or equipment, but it will be shared with all the other similar businesses within a barangay or locality or municipality. Now, under the capacity development and trainings activities, uh, we have a lot of training programs now online in partnership with the different agencies such as TESDA and the Philippine Trade Training Agency. This Control Plus Biz Reboot Now, it's a series of free online webinars to help MSMEs transform their business digitally. So alam po natin that this has become really very important. The, the shift to digital technology is really uh, essential to survive in this time of the pandemic. Then we also have partnerships with other uh, sectors such as the EC Builder Pro, uh, which provides free subscription fees for uh, businesses who would like to develop a website using their platform. But this one has an expiry date, so on, only until August 1, 2020. But I'm sure that there will be a lot of, of other companies out there that would uh, you know, uh, participate in our program. And we could just provide you a list of new participating companies offering uh, similar incentives or free subscription to certain uh, activities could help uh, small businesses. Okay, so those are just some of the programs of the Department of Trade and Industry, but as mentioned, we will provide you the inventory later on after the webinar. So for more information, you can also go to the Negosho Centers located all over the Philippines. We have over 1,000 Negosho Centers in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, and they provide a lot of assistance or services to Filipinos who would like to start a business. They provide counseling. They handhold you when you register your business. They also do consultancy in marketing, product development, packaging development, and many others. So this is for your relatives or families back home, and they could visit any of the negotiation centers all over the Philippines. But if you are in Australia, I would just like to assure you of the support of DTI. So for anything that has to do with business or doing business in the Philippines, please call us or email us and we would be happy to have a conversation with you. Now, just going back to what I mentioned earlier on the importance of being financially healthy, I'd like to leave you with a few tips from experts and some very wise advice from our great grandparents Mga kasabihang Pilipino po. But before that, experts would tell you, you know, to, well, there are rules. Like, first, remember the 50 30 20 rule. So 50% for your needs and then 30% for your uh, discretionary expenses or wants, and then 20% for your savings. If you want to, you can also reverse that and prioritize. So, in order of priority, dapat yung 20% savings, mauna, assure that first and then 50% for your needs, and then 30% again, you own a discretionary expenses. So second rule is to automate your savings or automatically deduct from, you know, every month from your income. But don't just save your money because sometimes, or most of the time, the interest rate is very low. So tulog po yung pera. So a lot of portion of your savings that you can use to invest. So invest or reinvest your savings, such as stocks in stocks, um, mutual funds, government bonds, franchise business, or whatever investments that you are comfortable doing. And last po, ang sabi ng ating mga lola at lolo, ito po ay talagang timeless, mga kasabihang Pilipino or Filipino sayings na 
sinasabi talaga sa atin ng mga matatanda. So first is kung may itinanim, may aanihin. Another variation of that is kung may itinanabi, may dudukutin. And then ito po, it's, this is very appropriate this time. Kung maiksi ang kumot, matutong mamaluktot. And on investments or investing, last yung daig ng maaga ang masipag. So I attended or I participated in a another webinar over the weekend on stock investing. And one of the questions asked was about or how early should one start investing? And an anecdote about Warren Buffett was uh, shared. And accordingly, Warren said that he started investing at the age of 14 years old. But he also said that he wished that he started investing at the age of 11. So, ganun po kaaga. Dapat daw mag-umpisa. So, for some of us, na paglipasan na, I think that's okay. Pwede pang humabol. But it's always good to share or impart that information to our children, or to our relatives, or to our friends. Para po mas maging mayaman tayo, mag maging mayaman tayo, katulad ni uh, Mr. Warren Buffett. So, again, thank you very much. At maraming maraming salamat po. And good luck to all of us. At maligayang pag-iipon at pagninegosyo po sa ating lahat. Thank you very much, Ms. Alma. Ms. Alma Ergayoso, the Director of the Philippine Trade and Investment Center in, here in Sydney. Thank you for sharing uh, all of the initiatives and programs of, uh, of your office, as well as those uh, nice tips and words of wisdom for, for our potential investors here, uh, for especially our, our OFW investors. And uh, now we will go on and uh, hear from our guest speaker, uh, the, the guest speaker for the, tonight's uh, webinar on financial literacy. Our guest speaker uh, is Vice Chairperson Leila Martin. She currently serves as the President and CEO of the Overseas Filipino Bank or OF Bank. Ms. Martin has more than three decades of experience in the banking industry. She started her career at the Land Bank of the Philippines, Land Bank, holding various positions in the bank's agrarian sector, lending sector, and branch banking sector, rising from the ranks to become senior vice president. Prior to her designation as president and CEO of the Overseas Filipino Bank, she was the group head of the Land Bank North NCR branches group and has been instrumental in its development, growth, and success. Ms. Martin's organizational skills merited awards of excellence in the fields of audit management, branch banking operation, and project management, which in turn led to the implementation of pioneering e-banking products and services. Some of the product projects she spearheaded were Land Bank's internet banking and cash card. Ms. Martin earned her bachelor degree from Pamantasan ng Lusod ng Maynila and garnered postgraduate units from the Colegio de San Juan de Letran a graduate of Land Bank's Branch Operation Development Program and the Leadership Development Program, she further expanded her knowledge in the banking industry by attending a rural banking course in Japan and taking up international study on rural banking and finance at the Massey University here in nearby New Zealand. So we're quite honored and uh, thankful that we have such a distinguished uh, guest speaker. So may we call on Ms. Laila Martin. Uh, good evening everyone and again welcome to today's session. Allow me first to thank you uh, for taking the time to join us today. Thank you for having us. We would also like to express our appreciation to Honorable Consul General Tago and to Director Alma Argoyoso and of course to uh, Consul Eman uh, for the very nice introduction and uh, for the opportunity to present OF Bank products and programs in this webinar. I am Laila Martin and with me today is OF Bank Relationship Officer uh, Eman Valdez. Also joining us is a colleague from Land Bank, Overseas Remittance Officer Richmond Ladrito. Let me provide a very brief background work about Overseas Filipino Bank. This is the former Philippine Postal Savings Bank with head office located beside the Philippine Post Office in Liwasan Bonifacio or the area commonly known as Loton in Manila. 
The OIP Bank was created by virtue of Executive Order Number 44, signed by President Duterte on September 2017. It is a wholly owned subsidiary of the Land Bank of the Philippines, which we call uh, uh, as the parent bank of OIP Bank, and being the top five banks in the Philippines right now. Uh, just recently, last June 29, the bank was relaunched as a digital-only first branchless bank in the Philippines, simultaneous to the launch of an online deposit account opening platform with artificial intelligence. Through this platform, which is more accessible, more inclusive, and convenient, Filipinos, wherever they are located, can open their own virtual deposit account that does not require any opening deposit nor any maintaining balances. With an OF bank account, clients can also perform various e-banking transactions in which we will be providing more info later. Uh, in the following segment, we will first provide some tips in managing our finances, followed by an audio-visual presentation on how to open that virtual account with OF bank after which we can have our Q&A. So let's start. Uh, we will be playing an audiovisual presentation for uh, our financial literacy program. Marami sa atin ang gustong mas mapabuti ang kabuhayan. Mahalagang magtabi ng pera o mag-ipon para matupad ito. Gaano mang kaliit ang kita mula sa trabaho mo o negosyo, pwede kang magsimulang mag-ipon. Paano? Dapat malinaw ang dahilan kung bakit gusto mong makaipon ng pera. Para ba ito sa pag-aaral ng mga anak mo? Para makabili ng kasangkapang pambahay? Pandagdag kapital sa maliit na negosyo? Ano man ang layunin mo, gawin itong inspirasyon para mas magsumikap na kumita. Isang mabuting tip para sa pag-iipon ang formulang ito. Kita minus ipon equals gastos. Ibig sabihin, tuwing kikita ka ng pera, unahin mong magtabi para sa ipon mo. Gastosin lamang ang halagang matitira matapos ibawas ang halaga ng ipon. Isa pang tip ay ang paggawa ng listahan ng mga madalas mong ginagastusan. Isipin kung alin ang kailangan o importante sa pamumuhay mo. Isipin din kung alin ang gusto mo lang bilhin, kaya't maaari mong ipagpaliban. Mula sa mga ito, pag-isipan kung magkano ang pwede mong itabi bilang ipon. Maaaring hindi bilhin o pagkagastusan ang mga hindi naman talaga kailangan. O kaya naman, bawasan ang madalas mong binibili o pinagkakagastos ang bagay o gawain. Makakatulong din sa pag-iipon ang pagbebenta ng mga gamit o kasangkapan na hindi mo na ginagamit o kaya ay hindi mahalaga sa pamumuhay mo. Totoong hindi madaling mag-ipon kung kaunti lang ang kitang dapat pagkasyahin. Kaya tandaan, kailangan dito ang pasensya at disiplina. Isa pang tip na pwede mong sundin, ang pagpapatulong sa isang taong pinagkakatiwalaan mo para itabi ang naiipon mong pera. Pwede mo rin siyang hikayatin na sumali sa pagtitipid at pag-iipon para may motibasyon ka at hindi matuksong gastusin sa ibang baga ang ipon mo. Mainam pa nga kung ilalagay mo sa bangko ang perang awak mo. Bukod sa tumutubo ng interes ang ipon mo, mas ligtas dito ang pera. Good afternoon or good evening there in Australia. Consul General Esiden Tago, Consul Emmanuel Guzman, Director Almar Gayoso, and of course our webinar participants. Uh, the DTI has been our partner in Land Bank, especially in the reintegration program where they provide the capability building together with our partner OWA. Let me start by asking us to imagine during this quarantine period as our retirement days where there is no work, no pay. Your income stops, but your expenses continue. Hence, it reminds me also of the words that 
Director Argayoso quoted from Mr. Warren Buffett on income. Never depend on single income. Make investment to create a second source. So let's start with what is an investment? Investment in economic sense is the purchase of goods that are not consumed today, but are used in the future to create wealth. In finance, an investment is a monetary asset purchased with the idea that the asset will provide income in the future or will later be sold at a higher price for a profit. So uh, with that, let us get a quick look at some statistics. As you can see, around 32% of Filipinos, only 32% of Filipinos put their money in banks. Around 80% don't even have a bank account. Perhaps this contributes to the data that 22 out of 100 Filipinos retirees still continue to work. and or dependent to their children. This should help us understand better why at this time, investing is a must for us. Let us uh, review the four main types of investment. We can invest in shares, where you buy stake in a company or in cash, which is the savings that you put in a bank or building society account. We also invest on properties where we invest in land or in physical building, whether commercial, residential, or even industrial and agricultural. We also invest in fixed interest security, which is actually a debt instrument such as a bond, debenture, or gilt edge bond that investors use to loan money to a company in exchange for interest payments. But apart from the four main investments, we also have other types of investments like foreign currency, collectibles such as art and antiques, commodities like oil, coffee, corn, rubber, or gold, contracts of difference where you bet on uh, selling assets. So we call it options, whether call or put options. Of course, we invest. When we invest, we expect returns or income. Depending on where we put our money, we could be paid in a number of different ways, like dividends on our shares of stocks, rental from our properties, interest earned from our deposits, and fixed income securities, and the gains from selling our assets over our purchase price. But the reality in life is, in investments, we cannot just talk of returns unless we talk also of risk. May kaakibat siya na risk eh. Lahat ng investment may kaakibat na risk. Investment risk is the probability or likelihood of occurrence of gains and losses on a particular investment. Certain investments carry different risks counterparty risk, market risk, credit risk, default risk, inflation risk, reinvestment risk, liquidity risk, and even country risk. Therefore, the need to balance between returns and risk. We probably have heard the notion that if you want higher returns, then we should expect higher risk. If we can only accept lower risk, then we should also expect lower returns. Uh, while risk cannot be avoided, there are, there are ways we can do to mitigate its occurrence. This is the central point of my discussion, actually. I will share some basics on investments, which if we follow and we, could, and we continue to gain more knowledge on investment, our chances of succeeding will definitely be higher. 
So let's start the first tip. We need to review our needs and goals. We always start in goals or objectives. It is worth taking the time to think about what you really want from your investments. Knowing yourself, your needs and goals, and your appetite for risk is a good example. People differ in their attitudes towards investing. Some are conservative, maybe from lack of knowledge or the amount of investment relative to his wealth savings and even on age, where normally older people are more conservative than younger people. Hence, younger people tend to be aggressive in their investments. If you have lots of money now, do you need to invest? The answer is still yes. You still need to hedge against inflation or at least keep the purchasing power of your money. Number two, consider your investment time horizon. How long can you invest? Think about how soon you need to get your money back. Time frames vary from different goals and will affect the type of risk you can take on. For example, if you are saving for a house deposit and hoping to buy in a couple of years, investments such as shares or funds will not be suitable because their value goes up or down. It is better to stick to cash savings accounts such as time deposit. Actually, my bureau, Jenny, if you want, if you're getting married, for example, in two years, do not invest in shares because otherwise, hindi matutuloy yung kasal mo pag bumababa yung presyo ng shares. So, however, if you are saving for your pension in 25 years time, you can ignore short term falls in the value of your investments and focus on long term. Because over long term, investment other than cash savings account tend to give a better chance of beating inflation and reaching your pension goals. Number three, we need to prepare an investment plan. Once you are clear on your needs and goals and have assessed how much risk you can take, draw up an investment plan. A good rule of thumb is to start with low risk investments such as cash individual savings account or short term retail treasury bonds. Of which Land Bank is one of the joint issuer as we are speaking right now, they, they are also launching the RTB Trans24. And then we add medium risk investments like unit trust, where if you're happy to accept higher availability. So even then, only consider higher risk investments once you build up low and medium risk investments. Number four, we need to diversify. There is always a saying in investment, don't put your eggs in one basket. Actually, it doesn't stop there because it is basic rule of investment that to improve your chance for a better return, you have to accept more risk. But you can manage and improve the balance between risk and return by spreading your money across different types and sectors whose prices do not necessarily move in the same direction. This is called diversifying. It can help you smooth out the returns while achieving growth and reduce the overall risk, overall risk of your portfolio. Number five, we need to decide how hands on we can be. You know, investing can take us and can take up as much or as little of our time as we'd like. If we want to be hands on and we enjoy making investment decisions, we might want to consider buying individual shares. But make sure you understand the risk. If you don't have the time or the inclination to be hands on, or if you only have a small amount of money to invest, 
Then a popular choice is investment funds, such as unit trust funds and mutual funds, because with this, your money is pulled with that of lots of other investors and it's used to buy a widespread of investment. If you're unsure about the types of investment that you need or which investments fund to choose, seek financial advice. Number six, it's always good to check the charges. Because if you buy investments like individual shares direct, you will need to use a stock brokering services and you need to pay dealing charges. If you decide on investment funds, there are still charges, for example, to pay the fund managers. And even if you get financial advice, you will still have to pay the advisor for this. Whether you're looking for stock brokers, investment funds, or advisors, the charges vary from one firm to another. Ask any firm to explain to you all the charges so you know what you will pay before committing your money. While higher charges can sometimes mean better quality, always ask yourself if what you're being charged is reasonable and if you can get similar quality and pay less elsewhere. Number seven, there are investments to avoid. First, we need to avoid high risk products unless you fully understand their specific risk and are happy to take them on. Only consider high risk products once you build up your money in low and medium risk investments. And some investments are usually better to best avoid. Number eight, there is a need to review periodically. Regular reviews, say once a year, will ensure that you keep track of how your investments are performing and adjust your savings as necessary to reach your goal. You will get regular statements to help you on this. However, don't be tempted to act every time prices move in an unexpected direction. Markets rise and fall all the time. And if you're a long-term investor, you can just try this out, these fluctuations. So the other question is, when is the right time to invest? Ms. Alma was talking about this. Is it yesterday? Is it now? Is it tomorrow? And at what age? Let's look at some illustrations. If you have invested, an investor who invested at age 30, he invested 5,000 per month with assumed annual growth rate of 6%, he would have 7 million when he reaches the retirement age of 65. But what about if he starts at 40? He would have 3 million when he reaches 65 with the same illustration. For example, how about if you start at 50 years old? You still get 1.5 million when you reach 65 if you invested 5,000 per month with an assumed annual growth rate of 6%. Note that these are hypothetical figures. They are not based on past performance or are not forecast and not guarantee of future fund performance. With that, I am confident we now can start investing. But before we can invest in the Philippines, we need a bank account where we can fund our investments. The next video will show us how the OF Bank has made account openings seamless for overseas Filipinos and your beneficiaries through its mobile banking applications. Let us watch the video. Dala ang ID sa 
at picture mo. Pupunta ka sa bangko, pipila. Kapag turn mo na, susulat sa mahaba at iba't ibang klaseng application forms. Pipirma rin paulit-ulit. Pero paano kung wala ka sa Pilipinas? O kaya naman, available ka lang beyond banking hours. Pwede ka pa rin magbukas ng bank account. Mas pinadali na ng Overseas Filipino Bank ang proseso through the new OF Bank Digital Account Opening Platform. Sa loob lang ng 5 minutes or less, matatapos mo ang application para magkaroon ng OF Bank account. May tatlong klase ng accounts na available. Merong OF Bank Visa Debit Account para sa Overseas Filipinos. Overseas Filipino Workers at beneficiaries na 18 years old and above. Kung below 18 and at least 7 years old ang isang beneficiary, ang regular OF Bank debit account naman ang para sa iyo. Sa OF Bank Visa Debit Card, free of charge ang interbank fund transfer. Ibig sabihin, libre ang maglipat ng pera galing sa OF Bank account. Papunta sa isa pang OF Bank account. Free of charge din ang fund transfer papunta sa Land Bank account. Mag-transfer ng funds gamit ang Land Bank Remittance System to Land Bank Partner Remittance Companies Worldwide. Pwede din mag-transfer ng pera sa ibang banko sa Pilipinas via InstaPay. Gamit naman ang OF Bank Visa Debit Card, mabilis na ang pagpapadala ng remittances through Visa Partners Abroad. Pwede na rin magbayad at bumili online o mag-transact to 61 million merchants na accredited ng Visa sa anuman sa mundo. Magbayad sa merchants at vendors gamit iAccess, mobile banking app at link this portal. Maaari ka na rin mag-avail ng cashless transactions via point-of-sale terminals sa iba't ibang establishments. At, mapalokal man o abroad, pwede na mag-withdraw sa higit 2.5 million ATM at POS cash-out machines na tumatanggap ng Visa card. Pwede rin over-the-counter kahit sa ang land bank branch. Interest-bearing o kumikita ang iyong savings kapag nag-avail ka ng account na ito. Narito naman ang features ng OF Bank Regular Debit Account. Avail cashless transactions gamit ang Banknet POS terminals sa mga local establishment. Withdrawal by Land Bank o Banknet ATMs. POS Cash Out for over-the-counter sa Land Bank branches. Receive remittance from OF Bank Visa Debit Account free of charge. Receive funds through Visa Direct or Land Bank Remittance System at Land Bank Partner Remittance Companies. Transfer funds to other banks in the Philippines via InstaPay. Mag-transfer ng funds to Land Bank accounts free of charge. Magbayad through ATMs, iAccess, OF Bank mobile banking app at link this portal. Betting din ang OF Bank Regular Debit Card. Mag-apply na para magkaroon ng OF Bank Debit Accounts. Walang initial deposit at maintaining balance requirements. Para sa mga OFW or OF, kailangan lang ang mga sumusunod. Active mobile number. Active email address. At least one valid photo-bearing ID. Para naman sa mga beneficiary, kailangan ng mga ito. Active mobile number. Active email address. At least one valid photo-bearing ID. At para sa mabilis na pag-apply, gamitin ang OF Bank Digital Account Opening Platform. Accessible. Dahil app-based, pwede nang gamitin kahit nasa kamen sa mundo. Padaling gamitin. Masusundan mo ang procedures with fees. Kaya limang minuto lang, makukompleto mo na ang application. High-tech ito at aided by artificial intelligence technology. Mabilis, dahil upon successful application, magagamit agad ang account number para tumanggap ng pera o pondo. Paano ba gamitin ang OS Bank Digital Account Opening Platform? I-download ang mobile banking app ng OS Bank. 
mula sa Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Buksan ang app at sundin ang mga sumusunod na steps. Para sa mga overseas Filipino or OF na nasa US, sagutin ang Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act o FATCA at pumili sa Yes or No option at i-click ang Confirm. Basahin mabuti ang Terms and Policies ng application. I-click ang box sa itaas at pindutin ang Next para sa susunod na step. I-provide ang profile at contact information. Click Next. Mag-nominate ng user ID. Click Next. Mag-set ng password. Click Next. Makakareceive ka ng one-time PIN or OTP sa registered mobile number. Ilagay ito at i-click ang Submit within 5 minutes. Makakatanggap ka ulit ng isa pang OTP para naman sa registered email address. Ulitin lang ang naunang steps. I-click ang Submit. Para sa security ng account, mag-nominate ng 3 security questions. Tandaan, case at space sensitive ang mga sagot dito. In case makalimutan ang password, pwede kang mag-log in gamit ang registered security questions. Click Next. To complete your profile, sagutan ang lahat ng mga ito. Para sa mga U.S. citizen, sagutin ang FATCA information for further verification. Click Next. Piliin sa drop-down menu kung anong klaseng dokumento ang i-upload. Gamit ang Zoom Identity Check, kumuha ng selfie at sundin ang instructions sa app para sa identity verification. Click Submit pagkatapos mong ilagay ang ID number. I-review ang mga inilagay na account details at i-click ang Edit kung may gusto kang palitan. Click Confirm. Congrats! Kompleto ng Old Bank account application mo. Ma-activate within 24 hours ang bill payment, fund transfer, Old Bank Visa Debit account. Magagamit ang features ng accounts sa digital o electronic transactions. Para sa mga beneficiaries, pwede rin ma-activate ang financial online transaction features ng Old Bank Regular Debit Card pag claim ng card. Pumunta lang sa kahit saan Land Bank branch at dalhin ang ID na ginamit sa account opening. Sa OF Bank Digital Account Opening Platform, less hassle ang bank application. Kaya, apply na! Paano naman magde-deposit sa OF Bank account? Lagyan ng pondo ang OF Bank OFW account. With your cash, pumunta sa pinakamalapit na remittance company. Visa Direct Partner o Banko. mag in sa OF Bank OFW account. Kung meron ka namang iba pang bank account o e-wallet, gamitin ang Visa Direct o iba pang electronic banking channels para maglipat ng pera papunta sa OF Bank OFW account. Pwede rin pagmula ng pondo ng OF Bank OFW account ang payroll, lalo na sa mga seafarers. Para naman sa mga beneficiaries, magkakaroon ng pondo ang account kapag tumanggap ng fund transfer mula sa OF Bank OFW account o via Instapay. Pwede rin mag-deposit gamit ang cash deposit machine o kaya naman ay mag-over-the-counter deposit sa land bank branches. Kapag may balance na ang OF Bank account, magagamit mo ito for fund transfers o pambayad. Paano mag-transfer ng pera? Step 1. Mag-log in gamit ang OF Bank user ID at password. Pwede rin gamitin ang Face ID or Biometrics kung supported ito ng phone mo. Step 2. Sa OF Bank MBA homepage, select Fund Transfer at the bottom of the screen. Step 3. Piliin ulit ang Fund Transfer. Step 4. Piliin ang Source Account. Click Destination Account. For OF Bank and Land Bank accounts, ilagay lang ang mga sumusunod. Mga 
maaari kang gumamit ng QR code to avoid errors. Para sa other banks, click Select Bank at i-provide ang account details na pagdadalhan. Applicable din ang QR code option for other banks. Pumili sa available transfer channel options. Click Transfer Now to proceed. Step 5. I-double check ang mga information na inilagay. Then click Confirm. Step 6. Makaka-receive ka ng one-time PIN or OTP sa iyong registered mobile number. Kung wala kang na-receive within 5 minutes, maaari mo itong ulitin at pumili sa dalawang options. Ilagay ang OTP. Kung enrolled sa OTP generator, automatic na itong papasok sa system. Click Proceed. Congrats! Pwede mo nang i-view or i-print ang payment confirmation or electronic official receipt as proof of your transaction. Magbukas ng account. Magpadila ng remittance. Magbayad sa dealers at merchants. Gawin digital ang pagbabanko. Hatid ang digital only, branchless, overseas Filipino bank. And so that's how easy it is now to open a virtual deposit account in UF Bank. So we're, if, if there are questions, many were uh, open so for, for, for the Q&A portion. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Ms. Martin and to all your colleagues at Land Bank and OF Bank. Uh, for your presentation, for the, all the useful information that will be that can, that will be uh, that can be very useful for the for our OFs here, uh, especially in, uh, in in this in this time in this time of uh, uh, economic uncertainty. Uh, we have several questions or several uh, comments uh, that we've received uh, pertaining to the presentations that you, that you've made. And uh, may I just confirm uh, from Ms. Alma and uh, and from our guest speakers that yes, the, all the presentations will be made available. I think we will be able to send them out to all those who registered to participate. Uh, I think you'll be able to send them by email. And then I think we'll also to see if we can post them on our social media uh, social media channels. Uh, but Ms. Alma and Ms. Martin, uh, could you just confirm that uh, the presentation and all the information that you have uh, that you gave will be made available to all our participants? Yes, Manny. We can provide all the materials to the participants and uh, we will appreciate if uh, our materials will be posted as well in your FB pages. Yes, likewise, uh, I'd like to confirm that we will uh, email the presentation to all the participants. If you came in as anonymous and you did not register because the link was just shared to you, please provide us with your contact details so we could email the presentation to you. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, we'll go through, we'll scroll through the, some of the questions that we, uh, we've received. Uh, from our from those who are participating here in the, in the webinar. Um, the first one, uh, we have a question here. Uh, it, it, I suppose it's a general, uh, it, it's a general question. Uh, can be answered by uh, our guests from Land Bank and even DTI. It starts off with just a, a, a general premise. Uh, for someone who's on a tight budget, how can they best save? And I suppose if I may, if I, if I may uh, go, go beyond that, uh, given um, there was a presentation earlier on uh, risks, uh, and we are of course right now in the in the midst of a global pandemic of great economic uncertainty. So perhaps uh, what might be the best advice that uh, our our guests uh, may give to an to an overseas Filipino as to what um, is the best way to save uh, on a tight budget and given the prevailing risks uh, around the world right now. Uh, what would be your um, best uh, best advice, best most direct advice for an OFW right now? Uh, first and foremost, savings uh, savings is just a matter of changing our attitude. As what Miss Alma has espoused before, we work on the 50, 30, 20 share of a pie, where it said that 
we we save 20 percent for our savings and for our investment so the formula is very simple from your income take out first the 20 percent or the savings and the investment spend only what is left after your savings so it also needs a change in the way that we the, the way that we uh, look at life like we need to live within our means on the second question at this time of pandemic how do we invest first is a uh, actually at this time the market is on the downtrend it's called a bear market uh, investors who are very experienced normally invest at this time why because the prices of the shares of stock are very low so when this pandemic ends the chances of the shares going up you will be able to ride the the gains that this company would enjoy thank you thank you sir We'll go straight to the next uh, question. A uh, question from someone who identifies as an overseas Filipino. Uh, OF po ako, nagpapadala sa Pinas. Saan nakabase ang forex rate na gamit pag remit? How do you compare, uh, I suppose, land banks, how do you compare OF, uh, OFB's rate with other remittance companies? Um, related to that, the next question is actually, how does OFB's interest rate compare with other banks in the Philippines? Uh, okay, uh, money for the first question. Uh, the remittance process is basically the same. OF Bank does not convert from uh, third currency or any other currency to Philippine peso. The, the OF Bank platform works on the premise that cash has been loaded to the OFW card. What was streamlined basically is the opening of account overseas or in uh, any location elsewhere, wherever you are based right now, and then uh, reduce the remittance cost in terms of the transfer from the OFW account to your beneficiary account. The trust of the government is to, uh, to allow the OFWs to manage to, to enable the OFWs to manage their own savings. We've had a lot of stories that the OFW simply remits uh, their salaries to their beneficiaries in the Philippines because they don't own their own account. They cannot open uh, overseas. So with the OF Bank uh, opening platform, you can now open your own account, deposit your savings there, and then just do fund transfer on a per need basis. Basically, you can control your own finances because you can even pay directly for tuition fees, for uh, utilities, for the food consumption of your families. No need to remit 100% of your salary to your beneficiary. Uh, based on the surveys we conducted uh, with, with the overseas remittance officers of Land Bank as well, the, the OFW doesn't do multiple remittances because that will cost them multiple times as well. Generally, the, uh, for, for a one-time remittance, the, that will be average of 600, uh, the range is 600 to 1,200. So if you do multiple remittances, then you multiply also that cost. But with the OF Bank uh, mobile platform, the OF Bank uh, OFW account, you just credit one time, big time to your OFW account and do fund transfer regardless of the number of times you do that in a day. And, and I guess what I'm saying is uh, the, the way to load or to credit funds to your OFW account is basically you go through the process of uh, crediting or loading money through overseas remittance partners or a correspondent bank or uh, as we are providing a visa enabled card you can go to the visa direct facility which you can browse in in your computer and request fund transfer but of course the rates of this company uh, still applies and uh, if you do the fund transfer process using the OF bank uh, card to the OFW beneficiary, that will be an instantaneous fund transfer. 
as compared to the remittance na it will take you minimum of three days, maximum of five days for the remittance to be received by your beneficiary. So in terms of the conversion rate, uh, that was not uh, uh, a consideration for the OF Bank virtual card. Uh, uh, for the interest rate, I think uh, basically all banks in the Philippines in terms of rates are comparable. So it's between, uh, if it's a, uh, an or a, the regular savings account, then you get to have a 0.10%. If it's a special savings account, then it can vary up to 1% per annum because it's a regular, unless you're gonna be putting your uh, funds in another investment, which is more a high risk uh, investment, then you will have higher interest rate as well. I hope I was able to answer the uh, query. Yes, ma'am, thank you very much. Uh, we have some uh, other questions here. Uh, if uh, if uh, Ms. Martin and other uh, land bank could just confirm, it's just basically on the being able to open such a such an account. So we have a question: Can we open an OF Bank account from Australia? As the video uh, had mentioned, USA. Uh, they just want confirmation that you can open an, an OF Bank account from Australia. There's also a question: Pwede po ba mag-open ng OF account yung student? So maybe uh, ask. Yes, the answer is yes on both queries. Uh, as long as you are a Filipino, you can open your account uh, either as an OFW or an, as an overseas Filipino or as an uh, OFW beneficiary. For those students that are age, that, that ages are from uh, below 18, but at least seven years old, we provide what we call a proprietary debit card. It's a regular debit card. It is not visa enabled. But if you are 18 years old and above, then you get to have a visa uh, enabled ATM card. So yes, even students can open an account. Thank you, ma'am. We also have a question here. Uh, is it is the account, is it insured like, the, like a normal bank account? Yes, uh, once you download the app, the first screen that will greet you is the welcome page. You will find the disclosures on the lower bottom of the page and the disclosure that the accounts to be opened are covered by PDIC up to 500,000 per account. That the OF Bank is a highly regulated bank by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. And of course, we have uh, this commission and audit as well, being a government bank. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, we also have a, just a question for Ms. Alma as to the materials uh, and uh, your programs. Uh, will there be other webinar trainings that will be offered by the DTI Negotia Centers? Yes, actually, it's an ongoing program. If you go to the website of PTTC, the Philippine Trade Training Center, they've now rebranded and it's now um, a global academy. And uh, they regularly offer various training programs for those who would like to learn about financing, accounting, marketing, business development. And now, ang talagang mga sikat na courses being offered online are related to helping uh, businesses shift to digital technologies. So as mentioned kanina, yung Control Reboot, that's another program uh, offered by the DTI. And then when you go to the negotiation centers, they also conduct trainings there. So, and you can also actually propose certain seminars uh, if there are skills or information that you need to be able to assist you in your business uh, you can also uh, request them. But we do have a lot of this ready-made programs already that's regularly uh, promoted and regularly available online. So that would be included in the list of programs that I will be sending to all the participants. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Alma. Uh, again, just to, um, to uh, on where Ms. Alma ended, just to confirm to all our uh, to all our participants here in the webinar that all the information and the presentations will be sent uh, to the participants to their emails. We have several uh, uh, questions and comments uh, that continue regarding the process of opening a, a OF bank account. So 
the links and all the information, the presentations and the video will be provided uh, directly uh, to you, to, to all the participants. Um, we have a, uh, if we have, I think we, we have time for just uh, one more, one or two more questions. Uh, we have a question here. What uh, to, we will pose it to our uh, to our guests from Land Bank and OF Bank. Uh, what is the minimum opening balance, and is there a maintaining balance for an OFB account? Oh, sir, uh, Bonnie, uh, may I may answer. Yes, please. Yeah, clear. Uh, we do not require any initial deposit, and we do not uh, require the client to uh, maintain any amount in the OF Bank savings account. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, perhaps the last question. Oh, we had an earlier question. Um, would you say, uh, can we consider, is electronic banking safe right now? And uh, we can also say, we can answer, how easy is electronic banking right now, would you say? Uh, well, basically, because of the pandemic, most of the Filipinos here in the Philippines are now into e-banking. A lot of reports was being floated that uh, if you go over the counter, uh, when you do withdrawals or uh, go to any ATM machines, the, the virus can be transmitted from doing those transactions. Well, it, we don't know if that's true. But basically, uh, th those are the information going around for quite a while. So most of the Filipinos right now are doing e-banking. The spike in the e-banking transactions are more than 200%. And, uh, and I think uh, we believe that uh, the, the spike provided by the pandemic would really push e-banking more because right now Filipinos are more aware and more attuned and more tech savvy in terms of uh, navigating the mobile banking applications. So for uh, what was the other question, Mani? Uh, uh, how that's... safe it is? How safe it is? How, yes, I mean, uh, how, how safe okay. is uh, e-banking right now? Yes, well, I can speak for uh, my parent bank and of course for OF Bank. Uh, as a su subsidiary of uh, Land Bank, we utilize, we share the same resources of Land Bank. So Land Bank has a, a robust technology. The e-banking are protected by 128-bit a secure socket layer, which would mean your uh, communication transmitted to and from the bank are encrypted 128 times. We employed in our MBA uh, what we call the artificial intelligence. We're running on the face tech technology and uh, there has never been a negative incident regarding the use of the face tech technology. And of course, if you will, uh, we are protected. The, the MBA is protected by the global secure sign, which is a global uh, security and authentication company worldwide. So a lot of these uh, security controls are embedded in the system. And the Land Bank main office has a huge database wherein we uh, host all the transactions and everything is secured. We regularly do the vulnerability and penetration testing, and annually we pass the BSP audit on security controls and the best practices that we are employing. Thank you very much, Ms. Martin. Ms. Martin, uh, would you mind uh, clicking on your video so we can uh, say goodbye okay. properly uh, as okay. we wrap up? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, That's fine. Yes. Yeah. Uh, all the yes. information came came in loud and clear any, anyway. Okay. Uh, and I think we are ready to wrap up our thank we, we say thanks to all our uh, guests uh, to Miss Martin and everyone from Land Bank and OF Bank to Miss Alma uh, from from DTI from PTIC here in here in Sydney. Uh, Consul General S, uh, would perhaps you'd like to have some uh, uh, last uh, words. Thank you, Manny. Uh, we've learned a lot of things today from uh, saving to investing, uh, the new app and the new account and how easy it is. And of course, from uh, Ms. Alma of DTI, we've learned about TNK and all the available resources out there. Um, I think uh, this is a good start for uh, um, a series of financial literacy for our uh, 
Filipinos here in uh, New South Wales, uh, in Australia, and whoever uh, has the time and would like to uh, join us. Uh, I thank all the resource persons. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Leila, and thank you, Rich, uh, Eman. Uh, uh, we've, uh, it, it's been a pleasure having you uh, today. Uh, I hope uh, to see you again and again. Uh, you can, uh, it's so easy to open an account. Uh, personally, I've been using iAccess and Land Bank since our salaries go to Land Bank, uh, but uh, I've been using it for years now. Uh, I've enjoyed the uh, free Instapay transfers for the past few months, uh, uh, Walang Charge. Um, I've had a couple of uh, high yield uh, saving accounts in uh, Land Bank uh, over the years, and uh, uh, we hope that everyone will be able to benefit from, uh, from your offering today, uh, being able to open uh, uh, an account there and also look at other kinds of uh, um, products by uh, over, uh, OF. Uh, uh, bank and also land bank and uh, when you save your money you can uh, at the same time learn how to invest and become an entrepreneur uh, DTI is here to support and they have an a, an actual academy now um, and uh, there are actually a lot of resources out there uh, like Rich said this is a good time to invest because stock prices are uh, uh, low uh, so uh, uh, Spend your time uh, learning and uh, taking advantage of the times. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Consul General S. Again, thank you to our guests, Ms. Martin uh, of OF Bank and uh, all our other colleagues, uh, all your colleagues from the Land Bank. Thank you so much for for taking the time and. Uh, and providing all this uh, very useful knowledge and uh, a very useful knowledge for our OFWs, uh, overseas Filipinos here in here in Australia and, and anywhere else in the world who are uh, taking part when who have uh, listened in. And uh, again, uh, we thank all those who have registered to participate in this uh, webinar, and we thank all those who have helped make, make this webinar uh, possible. It's from everyone from DTI, from Land Bank, from OFB and to the, our production team here in uh, the consulate and in, uh, and in DTI from Mr. June Gunai, Ms. Mabel uh, Caparino, and all the others who have uh, taken uh, the time to stay in. We, it, is now, it is now close to 7.30 here, uh, uh, Sydney time. And uh, we still had some questions uh, coming in. Uh, rest assured, we will be submitting these to the question uh, to the persons who you intend the, the questions to have been uh, sent to. We have some questions for uh, meant for DTI, and some continuing questions on uh, for for Land Bank for OFB Bank as to how to open uh, and where to get in the information that you provided during this. Uh, during the seminar. So again, all this information, all the presentation, all the links will be sent over to the respective emails of all those who registered to this webinar. So you will have access to all, everything that was said here, to the videos, the PowerPoint presentations, uh, and all the other information. And with that, we thank you again for, for, for participating and uh, mabuhay.